Doing a fast longer than 24 hours when you're worried about getting sick is not a good idea. I've got some solid research to back this up. Now, shorter term fasting, like intermittent fasting, still seems to be good to go based upon a lot of the research, but longer term fasting, you may want to wait. Now, if there are any videos of mine that you pay close attention to and watch the entire thing, I really think this is one because everything I'm gonna describe is going to paint a big picture for you overall. I don't want you to think that fasting is bad. Okay, longer term fasting has tremendous effects on the immune system but over the long term, not necessarily at the acute short term level. In fact, when you fast for a few days, white blood cell count goes down 28%, but it goes down 28% and then at the end of the fast, you create new white blood cells. So yes, with longer term fasting, you're creating new white blood cells, which essentially gives you a fresher immune system. However, during the period of the fast, you can be somewhat immunocompromised. So we may wanna shorten our fast. I'm gonna give you some research, but also in this video, I'm gonna help you break down how you should tailor your fast for best immune response, at least in my opinion. Hey, I do wanna ask that you hit that red subscribe button and then also hit that bell icon because we've got new videos coming out every single day. So that bell icon, you wanna select all notifications. That way you never miss a beat. I'm gonna quickly describe the innate and adaptive immune system so it makes some sense with fasting. Okay, the innate immune system is your body's just response to a pathogen in a widespread, powerful way that is not very targeted. It's innate, you're built with it, and it just attacks pathogens, okay? Then you have what's called the adaptive immune system. The adaptive immune system is more of a laser targeted approach. So think of it as the infantry just going in there and waging a war versus highly specialized special forces that are going in and know exactly what to target, okay? That's the difference there. Well, this plays into fasting because, well, when you're fasting, you do decrease some of your overall immune system activity, which can be very, very good. And let me give you an example. Most of us are walking around with a low grade chronic inflammation, which means like our day-to-day -day life, we have inflammation, which is why when we do a fast, we feel so good because we control that inflammation a little bit. Okay, but we don't always want to control that inflammation when there's a response that we need to actually have. Okay, so that getting rid of that inflammation is great, except when we need it. So if we look at a study that was published in the journal Cell, it was found that circulating monocytes, so circulating immune cells, would actually reduce outside the bone marrow during a fast. So again, this is great for people that just have low-grade chronic inflammation or they're fighting a low-grade infection, but it's not good if a pathogen is coming in and we need those immune cells present, right? Right. Now, a lot of this has to do with some complicated stuff known as like PPAR alpha, which are different signaling or receptor proteins. It's pretty complicated stuff when you get down to the genetic level of why this occurs, but I'll make some more sense of everything as well and then also be giving you a practical solution here in just a couple minutes. You see, the length of time of your fast matters tremendously. Okay, so the journal Cell also published another paper and it found that T cells, which again are very important immune cells, would be reduced during a fast, a longer fast. But the difference in T cell reduction between a 24 hour fast and a 36 hour fast was tremendous, showing that after 24 hours, we start to really crush our immune system quite a bit during a fast. The scary thing is after we break the fast, it takes a while for those T cells to come back up. It takes a few days. So the point is that a longer term fast should not really be done when you're concerned about contracting something or when you're exposed to pathogens. But shorter term fasts could still be good. Now I'll explain some more. But then we look at the big picture of the animal kingdom, right? Generally it's been seen that, well, when animals get sick, they don't eat, right? So it has to have something to do with our metabolic state, right? And there's definitely a degree of truth to that. You know, it's been touted in all kinds of different things that you should just not eat when you're sick. Well, some researchers dove into that a little bit more and again, published in the journal Cell. It turns out that our response to a bacterial infection versus a virus is totally different in the way of fasting. So it turns out that when you're in a fasted state and you have exposure to a bacteria, bacterial pathogen, you actually come out ahead. So what the scientists did in this case, they took a bacterial pathogen and they found that when that bacterial pathogen inside a body was exposed to glucose, when there was glucose present, there was a higher mortality rate, showing that, well, if you're not in a fasted state, bacterial infections can be more damaging. But with viruses, it was the opposite. When a virus came in the body and there was glucose present, they did better. 
So when a virus was present in the body in a fasted state, there was a higher mortality rate. Now again, you could expand more and more and more with this, but it all has to do with what happens when a virus enters your body. You see, a virus doesn't just affect tissues. It doesn't just affect specific cells there. Virus is interesting because it attacks the immune cells too. It invades the immune cells, which triggers what is called a cytokine storm or cytokine storm, potato, potato. Basically what this means is the immune system has this overacting chaos of communication that triggers a massive inflammatory response and a massive immune response. Well, what does this have to do with anything? Because you would think that when you're fasting, you're gonna be quelling that response, right? And normally you do. Normally when you're fasting, you're reducing some of that inflammatory or immune response. So as published in the Frontiers in Neuroscience, there was a paper that showed that during a fasted state, if a virus comes in the body, there is an increase in that cytokine activity, an increase in that overcommunication. Okay, so normally you'd have some degree of cytokine overcommunication, but in a fasted state, when a virus came in, there was even more. So it shows that fasting is really good for bacterial infections, but not so good for viral infections or viruses, right? Again, we're talking about longer term fasting. So what can you do with your short term fast? Obviously you wanna stay in shape, you wanna get lean, you wanna do what you can for your immune system. And again, we are supporting the immune system by fasting. We just have to do it strategically. So if you're short term fasting, if you're concerned about pathogens, you're concerned about contracting something, you wanna keep your fasting probably between 16 and 20 hours and not push it beyond that. I am a huge fan of longer term fasting, but it needs to be done in a much more controlled setting when you're not gonna be immunocompromised or you're not worried about getting sick. So with shorter term fasting, what you do wanna be doing is making sure that during your eating window, you're getting a lot of protein in. I say that because protein does trigger gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis does create glucose in the body. And like the study that I mentioned from the journal Cell where glucose seems to actually help with viral infections, then you want to have a little bit of glucose, right? So gluconeogenesis could be your friend. Plus, protein has a thermogenic effect. It's going to help keep you lean. It's going to help keep your lean muscle on you. There's a bunch of reasons to keep your protein relatively high after you break your fast. I would also recommend alternate day fasting, so you're not fasting every day and you're not consistently quelling your immune system. Okay, And then after you break your fast, it's going to be very, very, very important that you get a high degree of antioxidants and a high degree of greens in. Super, super important because what's happening is after you break your fast, you're going to have a degree of reactive oxygen species, a degree of oxidative stress that's occurring because you just loaded yourself down with calories and that's going to cause a response, sort of a waste response. But additionally, immune cells that are active generate their own waste. So I usually recommend getting as many greens as you possibly can in. One of the greens that I recommend that I would consider using is Athletic Greens. I'll put a link down below. This is a brand that Joe Rogan recommends and a lot of people that are in my circle highly, highly recommend. It's something that I've been using recently when it comes down to my eating window of my fast. Some people recommend having athletic greens during your fast. Personally, I like to have it during my eating window because it allows me to get a big infusion of greens and a big infusion of vitamins in that I think are going to just lead to the overall holistic approach that I'm after when it comes down to breaking my fast. So I would highly recommend consuming that not right when you break your fast, but maybe a couple hours after you break your fast. And that way you can just get your antioxidants in, you can get your vitamins in. Because what I don't want to have happen, and think about it like this, is you're reducing your calories during a fast, right? And then you have a small, finite amount of time to eat. It is not a good time to become potentially deficient in vitamins and potentially deficient in minerals during that day. It's very easy to have happen. I have a lot of days where I break a fast and I'll eat my protein, I'll eat whatever I need to eat, and then I get to the end of the day and I'm like, wow, I didn't really have any greens because my eating window was only four or six hours. So it's very, very important that you do what you can to get those greens in. If you can get them from veggies, great. Otherwise, I do recommend Athletic Greens and there's a special link with special pricing down below. They are a supporter of this channel because they know that I use them when I fast. So definitely check them out. Okay, let's talk some really good news here though with us, what's happening during like an intermittent fast, right? You have these other T cells that are called memory T cells. Okay, memory T cells, well, they have memory. And what that means is they can recognize a pathogen. And when they see that pathogen, they can go and they can kind of know what to do. They know the ropes, so to speak. So that pathogen can get neutralized a lot easier. Well, when you're fasting, these memory T cells actually go down during a fast, which sounds bad, but not really. Because what they found that they do is they rehome in the bone marrow. Okay, now when they rehome in the bone marrow, they get stronger and their memory improves. So visualize it like this. Here's kind of an analogy. You, you go on a shorter term fast 
Okay, and you've got these amazing memory T cells that are special forces operators that can go out and do their job. But because you're fasting, they go back to base. They go to the bone marrow for a little bit. They go back to the base and they recharge. They get stronger. They take a nap. Maybe they do a little workout. Maybe they eat some healthy food, right? They go back and they rehome. Then, after you break your fast, they release out of the bone marrow stronger. Why? Because they rested, they rehomed. So these memory T cells get stronger. So if we have stronger memory T cells, then we have a stronger ability to fight, well, infections and pathogens that our body has somewhat seen before. So that's pretty wild stuff, and that's exactly where fasting can improve everything. And I come back to that original study that I talked about, okay, when you look at white blood cells. So just now I can paint a bigger picture for this. If you go on like a three-day fast and your white blood cell levels go down, during the fast, that's a bad thing, right? That you don't want that. You don't want to be uh, succumbing to illness at that point in time because your white blood cells are down. But when they do come back, they come back refreshed and they come back stronger and they come back new. So over the long haul, you're doing your immune system a very, very solid benefit. So I do not want the wrong idea to come across with this. Fasting is powerful for the immune system. You just have to time it properly. Now, again, when we look at the big picture of controlling inflammation though, intermittent fasting, like shorter term fast, can be really good at quelling inflammation. And I say that you know, a little bit loosely, but realistically, when you look at a lot of the science, the presence of ketones, which occur when you are fasting, are naturally sort of an interrupter of what's called nuclear factor kappa B. So they can kind of control the inflammatory response. So if you're already sick, sometimes ketones can actually be your friend. Sometimes intermittent fasting can be your friend. It's just when that first initial response is coming that you have to be careful. So I want to recap so everyone just has a really solid picture here. Rule number one, no more than 24 hour fast when you are concerned with getting sick. So during cold and flu season, you may want to limit the length of fast that you do, contrary to what people tell you, okay? Rule number two, increase your protein during your eating period. I would recommend increasing it about 20 to 25%, quite frankly, because you're trying to get A, extra protein for recovery, but B, glucose to get converted from that protein. Okay, rule number three, antioxidants. Quite frankly, I don't care where you get them. Dark chocolate is a good one. Getting your greens in. Using athletic greens if you want to, using the link down below. However you plan to. Vitamin C, also very, very, very good time to consume vitamin C because then you're gonna actually get good absorption because of your insulin sensitivity after you break a fast. Look at my stash of vitamin C, all different brands. Okay, I just got my hands on what I could get my hands on. Rule number four is going to be making sure that you're hydrated and getting good minerals in if you do do any kind of intermittent fasting. Minerals are really the root and the core of a lot of our immune system, okay? There's different mineral responses, so I encourage you to look into taking magnesium, look into taking a little bit of copper, and making sure that you're also getting your vitamin C in since they all work in tandem. Of course, vitamin D is important too, but I have other videos on that. And a lot of people are probably wondering about exercise during this time as well. I would recommend that exercise still be done in the fasted state because to some degree, it can mobilize a little bit more glucose. A lot of times, even in a fasted state, if you work out, you have, again, a degree of gluconeogenesis that can help circulate glucose, which could potentially help your innate immune system do a better job at fighting off pathogens. So anyhow, I hope this video really resonated and that the solid point got across. And I hope you were able to watch everything in its entirety so you don't think that I'm anti-fasting, because I'm certainly not. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you soon.